All right, welcome everybody. Welcome to uh, this episode of O365A. Uh, on today's episode, we're going to cover something that uh, people usually have a hard time understanding, and it's the licensing around Teams Voice. So that's lighting up the ability for uh, your end users to call out to the public phone system and even some audio conferencing capabilities. Um, so I'll, I'll just kick it off with a quick uh, primer on Teams Voice licensing. It uh, really helps to break this down into just basic calling versus some um, more advanced features like audio conferencing. So at the heart of it, to get that basic capability for your end user to dial out to a public phone number and receive a call requires two things. Uh, it's a phone system license, and you can think of that as giving the user the basic capabilities that would be included in a PBX. Um, uh, once that's in assigned to the user, the next piece that needs to be um, allocated to the user is the calling capabilities. So for that, you have a couple of options, and there's three buckets of options. One is calling plans uh, that's available from Microsoft. So this, uh, by buying uh, a calling plan license for the end user and assigning it to that uh, end user, um, what you can do is enable them for dial-in and dial-out capabilities. Um, also, I'll just note that Teams Phone has been um, renamed Teams Phone Standard. I mentioned that as giving the basic uh, calling capabilities. But uh, back to uh, the calling um, capabilities. Uh, if you don't purchase the calling capabilities from Microsoft, another option is something called direct routing. And that's where you can purchase those uh, calling capabilities from a, a third party uh, carrier. And uh, they manage that uh, that service for you or you have a, a gateway that connects to their service. And it requires a little more setup, a little more administrative um, configuration. And in between is uh, a new option called uh, Microsoft Operator Connect. And that's where certified um, carriers can offer the service and it's a little more integrated with the Microsoft um, administrative tools. So it just makes acquiring those numbers from that carrier easier and it's a little simpler to deploy. Uh, again, the, the carrier has to be part of the, the certified uh, program. Um, in terms of audio conferencing, um, this is where you'll, uh, there's a couple of different options. If you need the ability for end users to call in with a phone into the audio conferencing that your host audio conference you're hosting with teams um, you'll need an audio conferencing license although um, we'll cover some changes recently that make a free capability available to your end users there and if you want toll-free numbers for audio conferencing um, just for your end users or auto attendance or call queues you need something called communication credits uh, so with that um, I'll pass it over to Habib to talk about some recent changes with um, uh, business voice license. Yeah, thanks, Kurt. So um, one of the uh, the things that has recently changed is the uh, or upcoming changes coming to to Teams Voice is that there was a uh, Microsoft Teams Business Voice uh, license that you could purchase for your small to medium sized business, which include. Uh, included uh, audio conferencing, uh, Teams phone system, and a calling plan license. Um, and so what's happening now is that that license is now going to be um, deprecated, or I think deprecated as, or has been deprecated as of March 1st. So I'm sure there's going to be some, some leeway time uh, for any of the customers that had that license. Um, to transition over to what would be the, the new license, which is um, Teams Phone with Calling Plan Bundle. So they're essentially decoupling the audio conferencing side of things. And then um, Michael will talk a little bit more about that on the on the audio conferencing side. Uh, but basically, you'll just purchase Team Phone system license and Calling Plan Bundle together. So <clears throat> that's it for the uh, for the business side. And then for all of the SKUs, there's been a um, um, uh, new pricing model that's been introduced. So on the enterprise level for E1, uh, is an increase of $2 uh, between uh, the, uh, sorry, this is for the Office 365. 
Uh, I think uh, so. The E3 has also increased uh, for three dollars. The Office 365 E5 has gone has increased for uh, three dollars, and same for the uh, M365 E3. It's a four dollar increase there. Um, the smaller uh, business ones have a slight increase there, so it's it's gone up uh, one a dollar for the business basic and two dollars for the business premium. So there's no um, <clears throat> no changes in the pricing for M365 E5, uh, the M365 business standard or the frontline SKUs. So there's no increases there. And there, these are only for uh, commercial SKUs and commercial customers. And the, um, the GOV licenses will be uh, likely changed over the next few years. So a um, little bit of changes on the licensing and pricing model as of March 1st. Uh, so with that, I'll pass it over to Michael to talk about the audio conferencing changes. Yeah, thanks, Hab. Yeah, to go with the theme of a lot of changes in, to licensing kind of in, in March 2022 is uh, the audio conferencing. So this has been, uh, you know, announced for quite some time. Uh, so Microsoft Teams audio conferencing is, is now going to be free. Uh, this license uh, to kind of the stopgap between uh, that being available and, you know, kind of during the pandemic, there was a Microsoft 365 audio conferencing adoption promo. And that was basically you can get as many licenses as you need for a year for free. That eventually is going to expire. So make sure when you're you're looking for your audio conferencing. So if you go into your, your Microsoft 365 Mint Center, go under purchase licenses. Uh, if you look up audio conferencing, there's going to be a whole bunch of different options there. There's going to be the the old paid uh, license option, which is just Microsoft 365 audio conferencing. There's going to be that adoption promo one. Uh, that one does expire after a year, so you don't want to get that anymore. And then there's the Microsoft Teams audio conferencing select dial out. That's the free license that is uh, remaining going forward. Uh, so any of you, any of the customers that are using adoption promo right now, make sure you transition your licenses over to this new select dial out license before your adoption promo expires. Because if you have no valid audio conferencing licensing in your tenant, you will not have your bridge numbers anymore. So you don't want to have that that gap where you're not licensed and you may lose some services and have to you know reschedule your meetings or or re put those those meeting bridges on. So to keep uh, on that theme. So this license is free. Uh, it was originally thought that this was going to be uh, included as a, one of the feature items under all the Office and Microsoft licensing uh, that includes Teams. That isn't the case. It is an add-on SKU. You have to add it. Uh, it's not automatically enabled in your tenant. And so once you add it, it's uh, similar to all the other add-ons that we talked about earlier. Zero dollar, but you do have to activate it on a per user basis, uh, just like you know, phone system to an E3 or something like that. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, so the select dial out is a new free audio conferencing license. It's an add-on, not a feature item under existing licenses. What's interesting is this license. Uh, uh, I was going to say that it is going to cover something that Dina is going to talk about, so I won't say that. Uh, but basically, yeah, the, the promo licensing you want to get rid of, move over to the new select dial out. It's showing up in the in tenants, that, all the tenants that I've looked at. With that, maybe I'll throw it over to Dino before I cover any of his topics. Always best going last on these things. You know, you <laughs> have nothing else to talk about. But what I wanted to uh, just cover is um, quickly is a limitation with dial out uh, audio conferencing. Um, in this this kind of only makes sense in a multinational tenant. So one thing you have to consider is when you the dial out number, the the number that appears to the person that you're calling, that if, you know the caller ID, it it it's the default for the tenant. So if you happen to set up your tenant in the Netherlands, and you know you've got users in Canada, the U.S., um, Mexico, all over the world, the the number that appears to the participants that you're dialing out to will be the default for the tenant. So if that happens to be set to the Netherlands and then Netherlands number is going to appear to all users, no matter where you are in the world. So that can cause a lot of confusion and often people don't pick up the call. So um, it's a design change, I think, that's been requested of Microsoft and hopefully they just, what really should happen is that they should follow the default uh, dial-in numbers that are assigned to a user that when you book a meeting and you see that whatever the numbers appear in Outlook, for example, that that's what auto, be the dial out number for that user, but it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So 
be cognizant of that and educate your users. Um, in terms of dialing out, um, you're going to get 60 minutes a user. So uh, all users have, have a 60 minute dial out capability for PSTN audio conferencing. You have unlimited in, so you can have as many users joining meetings um, and just just on inbound. So if they just want to dial into your bridge, but it's outbound is limited to 60. It's, it is pooled. So to calculate what you have, just take your number of users times 60 minutes. And that, that's how you understand what how many total minutes you have uh, within your pool. And then, you know, if you go over that, um, you're going to have to start paying. And the way to get around that is to use communication credits. So you'll have to fill them up uh, to get more minutes. I, I don't see a lot of scenarios where people exceed, but it just depends on the use case scenarios for your organization. So hopefully you're trying to communicate to educate to users not to do dial, not to use dial out. But I understand that there's there's a time and place for it. Um, something else that's not really a new concept is the bring your own dial in number. And that for direct routing as, as a service and direct routing um, was sort of came around for GCC high and government tenants because of some legal requirements. But for regular tenants, it never was an option. Uh, but with Operator Connect, Microsoft seems to be allowing the operators to, to supply you with that dial-in number. So if you, if, if you were in a situation where you just had a number that was highly publicized or you, you, you were dealing with a carrier that gave you an 800 number at a very good discounted rate, I guess, um, ideally, you, know, you can use this Operator Connect conferencing license it's uh, it's going to be an add-on license that I don't yet see in my tenant, um, so I'm hoping to see that soon. But there is documentation on it at docs.microsoft.com, so there will be an add-on license, and there's going to be configuration required to get it working, which is unfortunate because the whole point of Operator Connect was to eliminate any any you know kind of technical configuration for tenant admins, kind of like doing. Um, calling plans, you just basically assign a did, you know, there's very minimal work there, but this will require setting up, you know, PSTN usage and voice routing policies to, to be able to get that call to route back to your operator. So um, maybe we'll do a, an episode on that later when, when more details come out, but hopefully uh, that's something that gets changed as well. Because again, the spirit of Operator Connect is to minimize that kind of configuration, the technical uh, deep dive stuff that you have to do. Uh, normally with direct routing. Um, in terms of um, the free conferencing, SMB and government uh, will get that um, audio conferencing for free. For some reason, education's not. Um, so they're going to have to pay a buck 45 for a student and a dollar 92 for faculty and staff. Um, interesting numbers. I mean, it probably won't be an issue for students because I we don't think we don't anticipate any students requiring the whole um, the use of dial out or even the dial in. You know, most students are going to be using the VoIP capabilities of Teams. It may be an issue for for faculty and staff. Um, it's best to educate the users again on minimizing the usage of dial in and dial out scenarios if they can be avoided. And again, if there there are going to be some times where they can. And with that, I'll pass it back over to to Kurt to close things out. All right, good stuff, Dino. Thanks for that. <clears throat> uh, before we wrap up, just a quick question for, for Michael. When we talk about uh, customers that had the free promo, but now they want to transition over to the the free audio conferencing that's included in the, in the licensing, I guess how enterprises would do that is they would um, add the new free SKU and then swap that out with the existing one on a per user basis, right? The the license uh, item still shows up as audio conferencing under the user. So as long as you have a valid audio conference, it doesn't matter if you're paying for it, if it's under the promo or under the free, uh, you only see it as audio conferencing. So as long as you have valid licenses, you'll be fine. So uh, if you had you know 400 audio conferencing promos, get the 400, mm -hmm of the the free uh, go forward license and then when the promos expire those 400 will remove you'll still have your 400 new ones so uh yeah it's just 
it's pretty seamless on the end user. You don't have to reconfigure any users that already have the license. You just need to make sure that you don't have any point in your tenant, yeah. no valid audio mm -hmm. conferencing license. Okay, that, that, that's good to know. I was worried that uh, you had to assign a new license, but you just go in and add the new audio conferencing dial out SKU. You should be okay. Yeah, because yeah, what happens is if you don't have a valid audio conference license, the actual settings within the Teams admin center go away. So you don't have the ability to manage bridges. So right. if you acquired bridge numbers and stuff like that, that, that could be a problem uh, if that, that goes away for, for a small period of time even. Got it. All right, good stuff. Well, uh, I hope that helps sort out some um, of the licensing around uh, Teams Voice. It's a great feature set. And um, yeah, hope that uh, that was useful for you. Thanks, everybody, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you. See you.